Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. Okay, it is scope repair time. This is my oscilloscope lying on the bed. And you may remember in my previous video, I said that the screen was going, went really dark while I was looking at it. Well, I'm going to try to get to the root of that problem. Now, I've started dissecting this thing. And also, we're going to take a look at what is in this little box here, because I'm sure some of you are just as curious as me as to what's in there. Probably a flyback and a voltage multiplier, but we'll have a look in that. Unfortunately, that means I have to take this whole board off, which means unhooking the thing from the uh, back of the CRT, which you can see I've done, but I had to undo all of this so I could get the wire around so it's out the way. Anyway, I think what the problem might be is this capacitor here. Now, someone pointed this out in one of my in one of the comments. I'm just getting the camera to focus on it. The light seems to be glaring off it too much, but maybe if I turn the light out, you might be able to see that this capacitor here is not looking very good. That's got a little bit of a bulge there, so that's going to have to come out, because that might be going short. Okay, well, I managed to get that dodgy capacitor out. It put up quite a fight. The glue didn't put up much of a fight, but the uh, electrical contacts did. As you can see, they're still actually in the circuit board. And ended up pulling them right out of the capacitor, trying to take it out. But this is that capacitor. Um, you might be able to see it's looking very cruddy at the bottom there. So it's really not surprising that was going bad. Anyway, let's get this board out and take a look at what is inside the mystery box. Then I'm going to try to put this back together and see if it fires up. Going to have to get some tools. I'm going to need my AM keys. They're not my Eric keys or my Rob keys, they're my Alan keys. Now I'm about to take this board out, but this may take some time, because there are tons of connectors. And I think someone may have had this open before I did, because you can see that they are labelled, the connectors are labelled, and also the connector on the actual board itself. And there are connectors behind connectors, there are also connectors on this side of the board as well. You can just see them. I mean, there's one right there. And this looks like an obvious bodge here, this uh, brown wire you can see here. That, that actually goes to this external input. Anyway, so, I um, guess time to... whatever. Okay, that board is now out. Unfortunately, one of these connectors isn't labelled. That's not going to be too much of a trouble. Just look for the cross, uh, the only one on this board that isn't labelled as well, and shouldn't be too difficult to put back together. But now, find out what's inside this box. Let's get this open. Let's see what's inside. Okay, well that's a little different to what I expected. Looks like a high frequency transformer driven by a transistor, possibly a MOSFET. You can also see some capacitors and diodes in there. So I guess they're being used as a voltage multiplier. Not a flyback transformer though, like I expected. Oh well, let's put this all back together now and uh, see if it fires up without that um, bad capacitor in it. Okay, got the board back on there now, as you can see. Bet you didn't think I'd get all those connectors in. I think I've got them all in the right place. A couple of them weren't labelled, so I'm not exactly sure, but um, hopefully everything's in the right place. You might remember this repair from a previous video. 
the, the two capacitors there on the main plus and minus because I had to do it like that because I just couldn't get those other capacitors out and the capacitor to remain to replace that one that um, was that blue one that was bulging anyway I think we should test this thing and like a fellow youtuber suggested I'm going to connect this in series with a light bulb to limit the current now, what the hell's the deal with these British light bulbs why they always have to use this frosted glass and this kind of connection why they can't use the screw connection I don't know we do have the screw connections over here but for some reason the other types are more popular I don't know why okay now before I power this up I'm just gonna go over a few things a few safety precautions that I'm going to do now I'm gonna power everything on a separate transformer this transformer here is going to power the filament for the CRT my homemade power supply is going to provide the positive and negative power rails for the op amps and the low voltage DC circuitry and the scope and the scope's own transformer because it's the only transformer that has a 170 volt output that is going to power the high voltage circuitry but first I need to find out what the DC voltage is that the that the low voltage circuitry uses so what I've done is I've tapped the transformers output as you can see there I've gone through this connector with my meter to find out which is what the green and yellow wires goes to one of the secondaries which is the 170 volt secondary and these other three wires here they go to the other secondary on the transformer which is a center tapped secondary the orange wire goes to one end the red wire goes to the other end and the brown wires goes to the middle you know the center or whatever you want to call it anyway I've connected one of those ends up to a little rectifier and I'm gonna measure what the voltage is with my meter so plug in the scope well I will if a stupid wire would actually move right okay scope is now plugged in so I'll turn the meter on and let's test oh well we're already getting voltage there so I guess the power button must be on uh, which it is and the filament's still connected at the moment of course I won't see anything on the screen yet because none of the low voltage stuff is on and of course neither is the high voltage so let's um no, the voltage we need is about 22 volts. It says 21.8 volts on the meter. So that's what I'm going to set my homemade power supply to. I'll set it to 20 volts just to be safe. And we'll see what we get. Right, well, I've got my power supply supplying the positive and negative dual rail supply voltage for the low voltage DC um, circuitry of the oscilloscope. This transformer here doesn't quite go down to 6.3 volts it goes down to about 7 volts or so but that shouldn't hurt the tube this thing kind of looks like it's on life support at the moment and I guess it kind of is now doing a test of the scope with its low power circuitry powered up by my homemade power supply and as you can see on the meter it's drawing 456 milliamps it's also telling me that my, bat my meter's battery is low even though I just put a fresh battery in there but we has a light also we has another light okay the original transformer is plugged back into the thing now because I know that everything on this board and uh, a lot of stuff on this board is not taking any more power than it should still haven't tested the high voltage which is what I'm going to do now but I'm still going to power the filaments or filament on this transformer see what I want to do is just do a quick on and off just do a quick like that and see if anything appears on the screen without giving anything any chance to smoke or blow up and with the screen being pre-warmed up by the transformer here I'm not going to have to wait for the thing to warm up and I think that's going to be a much better way of doing this test now it's time to power up 
I'm going to first start with powering up the CRT, well, powering up the cathode. So I'll just plug this transformer in. Hope I'm not getting in the way. Okay. And we're getting some kind of reading there. Oh, I'm not really getting any... Oh, I've got this on the wrong range, that's why. Had it on DC amps, and I should have had it on AC amps. Okay, that is pulling... About 88 milliamps. Okay, 88.8. I think that has dropped as low as it will go, so I think the tube is warmed up. So I shall do a quick power on and power off test. Ah, there we are. It lives! Alright, let's just keep it like that for just a brief moment. Okay. It is showing signs of life. We have got... Let's just check that everything is working the way it should. Okay. I thought I saw a bit of smoke there. That was just a piece of hair but I think we are back in business okay let's test beam B okay we've got both traces that's good for some reason the bottom trace is a little bit bent I don't quite know why that is However, there is just one last thing I want to do to this. Because this does have a little problem with the trace rotation. So what I want to do... Because actually, I've had to put this all the way, as far as it will go, to get that trace as straight as possible. And I think maybe if I replace the two capacitors in this board, that would probably fix that little problem, so that's what I'm going to do right now. I think there's two capacitors there. Could be wrong, but I'm going to do that. Okay, well, eventually I managed to get that circuit out. And I've replaced that capacitor. This is the original capacitor, which is a 47 microfarad, 25 volt. I've replaced that with another 47 microfarad at 63 volts. Though you cannot really see it, there we go. Because when replacing capacitors, it's okay to go higher. I'm just trying to turn the camera's light off at the moment. I'm going through all different things. Now I've got the white balance all off. Hang on a minute. I'm just trying to f get this back to normal. All right. Okay, there we go. So when you replace capacitors, it's it's okay to go higher with the voltage rating. Okay, I've got that circuit back in, as you can see or maybe cannot see with a new capacitor in. Again, I'm powering the cathode from a separate transformer so the screen can come on instantly. So let's see what we get. Mm, nothing. Okay, well, transformer is on now and scope is working. Everything seems good. The focus is a little off, so I'll just adjust that. And now, because I did adjust this, just need to find something I can slot in there. Let's see if it's fixed the problem with the trace rotation. And that's done absolutely so at all. So replacing that capacitor still hasn't totally fixed the problem. I'm still having to turn that all the way over to the left to get those lines straight. I'll tell you one thing though, the overall brightness of the thing seems much brighter than it was before. So I'm going to say that's a successful repair and call it a day. So until next time, goodbye.